Are you fighting the good fight of faith? And if so, how are you going about fighting the good fight of faith? All right. All right. Are you fighting the good fight of faith? Yes. Yes. For the past month, I have taken a look at what the Lord has done for us through his call of repentance, mm -hmm. his work of reconciliation, all right, all right. his redeeming of those who are of genuine faith in Christ Jesus. Now, typically after Resurrection Sunday, all right. what I like to do is I like to focus on the believer. I like to focus on the role of the believer in our society, the role that we play in our world today. Yeah. You see, yeah. we, of course, we live in a day where Christ has died. Christ has risen. Mm -hmm. Christ has ascended to sit back at the right hand of his father. Now, for the disciples after his resurrection, there was a sense. Mm -hmm. There was this feeling that they had of a question. That question was, what next? Right. What yeah. do we do now? Yeah. Yeah. You see, they had spent the past three years of their lives closely following Jesus. Mm -hmm. They heard everything that he had to say. They saw all of the miracles that he performed. All right. In a recent Sunday school lesson, we saw where after the resurrection of Jesus, mm -hmm. the disciples, they were at the Sea of Galilee all right. and they sat around. They had that feeling again of having nothing to do. And as they sat there having that feeling that they had nothing to do, they decided to relive the days of old. Mm -hmm. They decided to go fishing. Oh, yeah. And it was at this occasion that the resurrected Jesus Christ appeared to the disciples on the coast. Mm -hmm. And he then brought them in and he taught them another lesson. Okay. He taught them that there was no time to rest. Come on, come on. He taught them that it was time to keep on fighting, yeah. to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Yeah. 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 Now, if there was no time to rest in those days, I would suggest to you today right. that there is certainly no time for you, the child of God, the servant of God, to rest today. Yes, yeah, I'm dead. We who genuinely believe in the Lord, we are all servants of the Lord. That's right. mm -hmm. I tell you today that the genuine believers, we have all been commissioned. We have all been tasked by Christ to do some work. All right. We have been tasked to live for Christ. Mm -hmm. We have been tasked to fight the good fight of faith. Yes. So the question becomes the question for us today is, mm -hmm. are you fighting the good fight of faith? Oh, yeah. What yeah. is the good fight of faith? Mm -hmm. What role do you play in fighting the good fight of play faith? Yeah. How do you fight this fight of mm -hmm. faith? Mm -hmm. Now, we should not think of this fight as one that is of a physical combat. <laughs> I know how some of us think when we start hearing the word fight. <laughs> Don't think that. In his letter, James, he wrote that if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way mm -hmm. will, serve, will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So I want you to understand that the good fight of faith mm -hmm. is one that is spiritual. Yeah, yeah. It is a spiritual combat, if you mm -hmm. will. There are spiritual implications on the line. All right. Spiritual implications of life and death. So a few Sundays ago, I asked 
a question during our Sunday school. Mm -hmm. The question that I asked was, what have you been called to do as a child of God? And all of us, we answered the same question. And most, Mm -hmm. most believers will answer that question with the uh, same answer. We will answer that question by saying that we have been called to save souls. Some will say that we have been called to win Mm -hmm. souls. Mm -hmm. Now, this answer, it is a common answer among many believers. We will smile and we will answer that we have been called to save souls. Mm -hmm. As we have seen James say here, James, he would certainly agree that the believer has been called to and can potentially save a soul from death. That death I speak of is spiritual death. Now, with this in mind, I admittedly have qualms about this answer. I have unease when believers give this answer. My unease is not necessarily with this answer being the wrong answer because it's not the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. This answer is certainly the correct one. However, my unease comes from a place of how some of us go about trying to save a soul from death spiritually. In other words, my unease comes in about how some of us go about fighting the good fight of faith. So I feel that it is vital for us as believers today Mm -hmm. to understand how we should go about fighting this good fight of faith. I believe that it is vital for us to understand today our role, the role that we as a child of God, the role that we play when it comes to saving a soul from death. In the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel, the 19th and the 20th verse, we find the great commission from Jesus Christ. In the Great Commission, Jesus, as we know, again, he tasked genuine believers to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Mm -hmm. in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we think of baptism, Mm -hmm. we immediately, we think of the water baptism, don't we? (laughs) All right. Some are of the belief that once they have been baptized, they are saved. Some are of the belief that once they are baptized, there's nothing else left for them to do. All right, all right. Now, as you have heard me say before, baptism, it saves no one. Mm-hmm. Somebody may frown at that come today. On, come on. But as you have heard me say before, baptism is just an outward showing. It is an outward, thank you, auntie, expression of saying that we have faith, Mm -hmm. of saying that we believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, in order for one to be saved, I tell you today that faith, it must happen in the inner man. Come on, come on. Faith, it it must happen in the soul. If faith can happen in the soul, then it can express itself outwardly through our actions. Our actions, our outward actions, they then become a reflection Mm -hmm. of what's happening to us on the inside in our soul. If you do not have faith in your soul, your outward actions are not going to express faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So when I look at Jesus in the Great Commission here speaking today Mm -hmm. of baptism, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I certainly think of water baptism first that comes to my mind. I can't hide that. Mm -hmm. However, I want you to consider today that there may have been another baptism that Jesus also had in mind here today that he was including in this baptism. Mm -hmm. If you pay close attention there to that 20th verse, I want us to note there in the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel that Jesus said that new followers should be taught. Mm -hmm. 
he said there. He said that they should be taught to observe all things that he commanded. Are we following that closely there? So I would suggest to you here today that we should also baptize, not just by water baptism, Mm -hmm. but that we should also baptize all hearts, all souls in the sound doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All All of the things that he taught, all of the things that he preached. Yes, his, his death his resurrection, his ascension as well. We should be baptizing hearts today in the sound doctrine of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on. Now, someone may ask, well, why do I say this? Well, if we are going to fight the good fight of faith, I believe that the weapon we should fight with mm-hmm. is the doctrine of God, Mm -hmm. that is his gospel. Mm -hmm. You see, it is nothing that any thing that is nothing that we can do. There is nothing that we can do on our own power. There is not anything that you or I can personally do to save someone's soul without the gospel. Mm -hmm. We don't have the power to save a soul without the gospel, without God. Mm -hmm. You see, it is God that saves. It is God that saves and it is his gospel that we should preach, Mm -hmm. that we should teach, that can save someone's life, that can save a soul. Mm -hmm. To the Romans, Paul wrote that he taught the sound doctrine of the gospel to Gentiles in order to magnify his ministry. Paul's ministry, I want you to understand today, was not one that was of his own. He didn't make it up. He didn't create it. Mm -hmm. It was of Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul, he tells us that he preached Christ in order to save both Gentiles and his brethren, Mm -hmm. his fellow people. If we look back to James's writing, If we look at the first chapter of James and we look at the 21st verse in the first chapter of James, we see that James wrote that we should lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness to receive with meekness the implanted word, Mm -hmm. the implanted word being the gospel of Jesus Christ, which James said is able to save our souls. You see, again, it is the gospel that can save souls, not anything that we do ourselves by our own power. Yes, the genuine believer has been called to save souls. We have been called to fight the good fight of faith. However, we must greatly consider how we are going about fighting that good fight of faith. We must consider today how we are going about trying to save a soul from spiritual death. We do not save souls by our own power and authority, but by the Lord's power, by the Lord's authority. Mm -hmm. We are to minister the gospel of God to others. And it again is his gospel that saves. Let us understand that the ministering of the gospel is meant to persuade. It is meant to encourage others to come to Christ. So essentially our role in this fight is to be encouragers. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me today? Our role in this fight is to be encouragers to those who are not of faith. Mm -hmm. We are to encourage them to go to Christ. Mm -hmm. Listen to this message of God. Christ can and will save the souls of those that are open to his saving grace. Are you open to his saving grace today? Are you fighting the good fight of faith today? Now with this in mind, there are many believers who struggle to understand this role that they play, this role of service to someone who is around them. Some approach fighting the good fight of faith to encourage others to come to Christ with the mindset that 
is not of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, what I mean by this is that some approach fighting the good fight of faith with the mindset where they go beyond God's intended role for them. They go beyond God's intended role for all of us for their own idea mm -hmm. for how this fight should be fought. Mm -hmm. In my sermon last week, we saw where the Jews who had been given the law of God to live had that very same kind of mindset that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. They had a mindset to where they came up with their own narrative, right. their own saying, their own proverb as to who could live and who would die. All right. Where the Lord is truly the judge, jury, and executioner over all. We saw in my sermon last week where the Jews, by coming up with that saying, they had essentially made themselves out to be the judge, jury, and executioner over others. All right, all right. In other words, they had given themselves the power. Mm -hmm. They had given themselves the authority yeah. to have rule over someone else's fate. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me here today? Yeah, yeah. There are many who today claim to be believers all right, all right. that feel they have such power and authority to decide who can be saved. Yeah to decide who cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me here today? Yeah, yeah. Now, as we know, God has said that all people can be saved. All, right. yeah. all who should turn from their wickedness and believe in him, mm -hmm. God has said they can be saved. Yeah, yeah. Who are we as a believer, all right. as a child of God, to say otherwise, yeah. who are we to be the one to judge that? Mm -hmm. So we need to understand today that just because we are a child of God, that does not make us judge. That does not make us jury. That does not make us the executioner of anybody. All right. That All is right. not our role in this good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Our role is like the corner man in boxing. We should always be guiding. Mm -hmm. We should always be encouraging others to keep picking themselves up in their fight. The real shame is that many believers have sadly played the role of judge, jury, and executioner rather than the encourager. And that has brought about great harm for many in our world today. We who are fighting the good fight of faith, we should not be a stumbling block to anyone. And you've heard me say that a lot. I'm always speaking on how we as followers of Christ, genuine believers, how we are to carry ourselves. Yeah, yeah. It is of the utmost importance in how we carry ourselves mm -hmm. in the role that we serve in our world today. To the Romans, Paul, he wrote, let us not judge one another anymore, mm -hmm. but rather resolve this not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way is what Paul said. So how does one become a stumbling block to another? See, this happens when one chooses to move by their own authority All right. rather than by God's authority. You often hear me speak about being a stumbling block because a child of God should not cause one to stumble. All right. A child of God ought not cause one to be pushed further away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, if a believer is doing this, right. if they're pushing someone away from God, or if they're causing someone to stumble, I tell you that that believer is not fighting the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not fighting the good fight of faith in a good way. They are fighting that fight of faith in a way that is improper, mm -hmm. in a way that is poor, 
In this fight, I want you to understand one that pushes someone away, one that causes someone to stumble, one that causes one to fall from God is being a poor fighter in this fight. They are fighting this fight of faith poorly. And the child of God should not be fighting the fight of faith poorly today. In his letter to Timothy, we will see Paul touch on the one who believes that they are fighting the good fight of faith, but in actuality, they're fighting that fight of faith improperly. That is in a way that is not helpful. In boxing, it is good to knock your opponent out. But in this fight, the believer should not be knocking out anyone that is not their adversary. (laughs) So our goal should be to endure in this fight. Our goal should be to withstand our fight against our adversary, which is the devil, as we know, Mm -hmm. while also helping others to remain on their feet, while also helping others to be able to endure or to pick them back up to their feet, as again, they are doing battle with the very same adversary that we are doing battle against, the devil. The one that fights improperly, Mm -hmm. Paul, we see, tell us there in the third verse in the sixth chapter of Timothy, they use a doctrine that does not consent to wholesome words. Mm -hmm. Let us understand the poor fighter here so that we don't become the poor fighter. Again, he said that they do not consent to wholesome words, the words of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This sounds like a totally different doctrine. It doesn't sound like they are ministering or Mm -hmm. fighting with the doctrine of God, does it? Mm -hmm. This doctrine, Paul will see also tell us there in that same verse is one that does not consent to godliness. Again, this doesn't seem like the doctrine of God. This does not seem like the gospel because the gospel wants you to strive to have that form of godliness that is of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This again sounds like a a totally different doctrine here. Let us understand that this doctrine, that ain't sound doctrine. This doctrine that, that Paul is speaking of here, that the improper fighter, the poor fighter here Mm -hmm. is using, it is not sound doctrine. It is not doctrine that is faithful to the Lord. It is doctrine that is not true to God today. This doctrine, it does not lead to saving Mm -hmm. a soul. Mm -hmm. It does not lead to deliverance. It does not lead to salvation. So what good is this doctrine then? What good is this doctrine that does not consent to godliness For those who choose to minister it Mm -hmm. to those who hear it and choose to accept it, choose to take it in. What good is it doing them? All right. All right. Yeah. How could the one that would minister this doctrine, Mm -hmm. the one that will fight the fight of faith with this doctrine, how could this person be fighting the good fight of faith in a good way? If this doctrine is one that's not saving a soul, Mm -hmm. do you hear me here today? We cannot be the poor fighter in this fight. Mm -hmm. Sadly, there are many unhealthy doctrines in our world today that's circling around in it, by which many have been indoctrinated with. We've been indoctrinated by the doctrine of sin from birth, Mm -hmm. taking it in, learning from it where we need to be breaking away from it. We can't be ministers of a doctrine that adds on to that doctrine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, these doctrines, they are unhealthy doctrines because they stand in opposition to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore, again, this means that those doctrines are sinful doctrines. Mm -hmm. They are doctrines of sin. This should not be a part of a Christian, one who says that they are of faith. Living by these unhealthy doctrines, they put the soul into poor health. Mm -hmm. 
They put the soul into poor health and therefore they can lead the soul to its destruction if one does not adopt a new healthy doctrine. Mm -hmm. That said, the good fight of faith should not result in anyone's destruction, but rather it should lead one to life, life eternal. We're talking about life spiritually. So again, I must ask today, are you living for the good fight of faith or are you fighting that fight of faith poorly today? Let us consider again how Paul described one who is fighting poorly here. We see Paul tell us there in the fourth verse that the poor fighter is one that fights proudly and knows nothing. The poor fighter, Paul tells us, is one that is proud and knows nothing. I would add on the word absolutely. They know absolutely nothing. Come on, come on. This would then suggest that this fighter in this fight is one that is fighting blindly. Mm -hmm. This fighter in this fight is one that is fighting ignorantly. <laughs> this fighter in this fight is one that is swingly, aimlessly, wildly. Do you hear me here today? <laughs> yes, sir. We see the wildness of this fighter yeah, as Paul yeah. continued and said there that they are obsessed mm -hmm. is the word there. Obsessed with disputes, mm -hmm. obsessed with arguments over words, which leads to nothing, Come on. Come on. not saving. Paul tells us that they are obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, which lead to envy, which lead to strife, which leads to what? Who's reading it? Right. Reveling. Mm -hmm. Better keep those Bibles open. They don't lead to salvation. In other words, mm -hmm. this doctrine don't lead to salvation. The fighter that's fighting this fight poorly, they aren't helping anyone to salvation. Sadly, there are many who have been fighting this fight wildly and with little understanding who say that they are believers. There have been some that have an attitude that they are at war for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in their war for the Lord, they lead the charge against all opposition in a manner that contradicts God's doctrine. Do you hear me here today? Do you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. here today? where we should fight the good fight with patience, with understanding, with gentleness, with self-control, the poor fighter begins to fight out of anger. Mm -hmm. The poor fighter begins to fight out of hate. Again, we see that the poor fighter is fighting wildly, All right. All right. knocking down people that they should be helping allowing them to stay on the ground when they should be helping them back up to their feet as they proudly celebrate as if they have gotten a victory for the Lord. Did you help that soul or did you push that soul away? Did you save that soul or have you put that soul in the grave? I don't know if you hear me here today. I don't know if you know where I'm coming from today. I see it all too often. Well, we as believers should be helping, but we ain't helping nobody. All right. All right. You see, we are encouraged through the Holy Spirit to edify. We are encouraged through the Holy Spirit to uplift yeah. Yeah. rather than to dictate to others, rather than to tear down and bring down others. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit encourages us to love rather than to wrath. All right. The gospel, it is not meant for tearing down, but rather for lifting up. Mm -hmm. The gospel is meant for saving others by the authority of the Lord. Right. See, we cannot save any souls in this fight if we mm -hmm. fight in a manner that is contrary to how the Lord has commanded us to fight. Yeah. 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 Amen. Right. Do you desire to be a good fighter for mm -hmm. the Lord today? Mm -hmm. Do you desire to fight the good fight of faith properly today? 
If we desire to fight the good fight of faith as the good fighter, let us listen to the words of Christ today. In the book of Acts, the first chapter, the seventh and the eighth verse of that first chapter, we will see Jesus flesh out more of the great commission to us as he spoke to the apostles there. In the first chapter of Acts, the seventh and the eighth verse, Jesus said that it is not for you to know times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem oh, yeah. and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, someone may wonder, well, why did you reference that scripture there, preacher? Right. I want to be clear here to you today. When I say that Jesus was speaking to the apostles here about the Great Commission and fleshing it out more for them, I want you to understand that Jesus was putting us in our place, putting them even in their place when it comes to what he has tasked us to do on his behalf. Firstly, Jesus tells us that it is not for us. It is not for you to decide the date and the times. What this means is it's not for you to decide the outcome or the fate, if you will, of anything or anyone. That is not your role. We don't have that authority. All right. All right. Jesus, he makes it clear that there is only one that has that power and that authority. Jesus, he makes it clear that only the father has the authority to decide the date and the times. It is only the father that has the authority to decide the outcome, the fate of anything or anyone. Mm -hmm. not us oh, yeah. not man not woman mm -hmm. the father God I want you to understand that we are not the spiritual judge over anything or anyone mm -hmm. to act as the judge, jury and executioner would be contrary to fighting the good fight of faith do you hear me here today? Amen. So we must first, if we want to be the good fighter in this fight, we must first eliminate the thought of fighting the good fight of faith in a manner where we are the judge, jury, and the executioner. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we have to remove that from us. We have to eliminate this thought from us. We have to eliminate that mindset. Secondly, Jesus shows us that as a child of God, we are to be humbly led by the power of of the Holy Spirit as a witness of Christ in all of our world. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, as we know, dwells in the hearts of all of those that genuinely believe in and follow Christ. In the 16th chapter of John's gospel, Jesus shows us that the Holy Spirit carries with him the Lord's doctrine, the doctrine of truth that convicts the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. The purpose of this doctrine carried by the Holy Spirit is to convince the world to turn, to trust, and to have faith to be saved from sin by the Lord through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Where another doctrine creates confusion through envy and through strife, through argument. Mm -hmm. We find that God's doctrine does not create such confusion as he, God, is not the author of confusion. It is so important that we as a child of God, we as a fighter in this fight of faith, it is important that we understand this fact. We should not be bringing about confusion in our world today. We see that Paul, he continued on there in 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, the 14th verse. We see that Paul, he continued on to exhort Timothy to be a good fighter. He exhorts Timothy to fight the good fight of faith by remaining faithful, 
without spot and blameless in a world that is filled with so many other doctrines of sin. Something that I often express to you is that you are constantly being watched. You are being watched by both believer and non-believer. You see, they are watching you to see how you are going about fighting this fight of faith. And I tell you today, trust me, that they can tell whether you are a good fighter or a poor fighter. They can tell you, they can tell when you are fighting this fight right or wrongly. So we as a child of God and one who desires to be a good fighter in this fight, we better be fighting this fight the right way. So Paul shows us more ways that we can go about fighting the good fight of faith here. As he writes to Timothy, we'll see that Paul tells Timothy to command those who are rich in this present age, not to be haughty. That is disdainfully proud or put their trust in uncertain riches. But rather, he says that in the 17th verse says rather to believe and trust in God, Mm -hmm. put your faith in the right place is what Timothy is saying there. In other words, we fight this good fight of faith by being faithful to the Lord and not to anything else, not to some other doctrine. We don't live by some other doctrine. We live by the Lord's doctrine. That's how we live to fight this good fight of faith. You see, we also fight the good fight of faith by holding to our godliness. We hold to our godliness in a world where there is great opposition and adversity that's constantly trying to break us, that's constantly trying to destroy us. The godliness which we gained, again, it comes through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit by which become by which we become a new creation, being led by the Holy Spirit. So in order to fight the good fight of faith, Paul, we will see, encouraged Timothy there in the ninth, the 10th and the 11th verse. He encouraged Timothy to flee from things like lust, like temptation. He said that the love of money, we should flee from it as well. Mm -hmm. And that we should pursue righteousness, Mm -hmm. that we should pursue godliness, that we should pursue faith, love, patience and gentleness. You see, we must do just as what Paul encouraged Timothy to do today in order for us to fight this good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Paul, he encouraged us there again in my key verse for today. He encouraged us to fight this good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. We'll see him say there that we should lay hold on eternal life and the good confession that again is the doctrine. That again is the gospel. We ought to lay hold on to it as well, which we have testified of before many witnesses verbally and also through our actions. Mm -hmm. So again, in order for us to fight this good fight of faith, we have to lay hold on to the Lord. We have to lay hold on to what he has promised. He has promised us eternal life. And that promise we know comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we ought to lay hold on his only begotten son so that again, we can fight this good fight of faith. Should we fight the good fight of faith in this manner, we will be the best representation of the Lord that we can possibly be. This is the example I tell you today that can encourage This is the example I tell you today that can save a soul from death spiritually. So again, I ask you the question today, are you fighting the good fight of faith? Are you living for the good fight of faith? If not, you now know the proper way in which you can live for that fight in the good way. You also know the improper way. So if you've been fighting this fight improperly, change your style, change your stance in this fight so that you can fight this fight of faith in the right way. Amen. Amen. Amen.